World of Warcraft has seen some very dark times. Content droughts, design fiascos, scandals, systems too complex for their own good, and radio silence as community engagement hits an all-time low. And now Final Fantasy XIV and other competitors are closing in. But I don't think this has to be the end of the story for World of Warcraft. What World of Warcraft needs is simpler systems, more content, better community engagement so that the dev teams know what will get players excited to pick up World of Warcraft again. To that end, I have invented a system of my own, a simple system that gives players huge amounts of customization, that lets developers add awesome and useful abilities without fear of spellbar bloat, giving players the ability to upgrade three of their spells to be something new. I'm cooking up concepts for seven of these upgrade spells for every spec. Some of them are returning favorites. Some of them are brand new. Either way, Blizzard has my express permission to use every concept I post about in these videos in the comments or on the forums. And if the Blizzard developers are too pressed for time to engage with the community, then I will. I'll get the feedback on this concept, and even if they don't take a single one of my ideas, they'll know what the players want, and most importantly, why and they can use that to make the game better. Because I want this game better. I want WoW to last another decade. Beast Mastery was a hunter spec that, uh, well, it was so different from the other specs. In fact, it was different from almost every other DPS spec in the game because most DPS specs are all about building and spending resources. Beast Mastery's main source of focus is actually passive focus regeneration. That kind of knocked me for a loop. Another problem I had for Beast Mastery was similar to the problem that I hit with Survival. Your rotation is, well, it's fairly simple in terms of the number of abilities in it. And the fewer abilities that are in your rotation, the fewer options I have for what to upgrade. It wouldn't surprise me if an experienced Beast Mastery player takes one look at my spread of upgrades and comes up with a better spread in about 10 minutes. I'm always looking for feedback, and I hope I get it, but I will still show you what I put together for the first iteration and what I was thinking when I did, so that if you have better ideas, and you probably do, then you can explain specifically why my ideas are lackluster compared to yours and where I went wrong with my thinking. The first upgrade that I have in the spread is Blink Strike, an upgrade for multi-shot that causes your pet to deal damage to multiple targets and activates Beast Cleave. It has no cooldown. The second upgrade is Leonine Shot, an upgrade for Barbed Shot that applies bleeds to multiple targets. Third is Viper Shot, an upgrade for Cobra Shot that consumes more focus and deals more damage, but that reduces Kill Command's cooldown by 1.5 seconds when you use it. The fourth upgrade is Guard Pet, an upgrade for Mend Pet. It's instant cast and provides a damage shield for your pet that absorbs up to 50% of the pet's maximum health. This ability has a cooldown. The fifth upgrade is Executor's Shot. It is an upgrade for Kill Shot that deals bleed damage and that costs more focus to cast. The sixth upgrade is Frost Trap, which is an upgrade for Tar Trap that deals frost damage while enemies stand in the ice and the ticks of damage have a chance to reset the cooldown of Barbed Shot or Leonine Shot. Finally, Silencing Shot, an upgrade for Wailing Arrow that affects a single target and has a shorter cooldown and more damage. I should probably start by saying that Silencing Shot was a misunderstanding on my part. I saw Wailing Arrow deep in the list of Hunter class abilities on Wowhead, and I thought to myself, hmm, the devs must have added a nifty utility a cooldown for Hunters. And I realized that uh, you only get Wailing Arrow if you get your hands on Sylvanas' legendary bow sometime later. Oh well, I have a plan B. If they don't end up giving Wailing Arrow to every hunter, I can tweak Silencing Shot so it's a non-damaging upgrade for Counter Shot. Executor Shot is basically just a buff for Kill Shot. I figure adding a damage over time might make it a bit more lethal, not to mention frustrating for the target if the thing that kills them is the damage over time. Frost Trap was another import from Survival, and it's about doing a little multi-target damage and possibly resetting a cooldown or two. Barbed Shot looked like the most logical cooldown to reset, though I'm open to feedback if there's a better cooldown. 
Blake Strike was an older hunter talent that gave your pet some multi-target damage. Since the Beast Mastery's, well, mastery, is all about increasing your pet's damage, I figure giving your pet a direct AoE damage ability would be an upgrade over having a multi-target shot yourself. Which is a strange thing to say when I also have Leonine shot, but I figure that, just in case your pet dies, having a multi-target damage ability is better than not having one. And looking at IcyVeins.com and seeing how it sings the praises of multi-dotting with barbed shot, I realize I probably did the right thing for the wrong reason with the Leonine shot upgrade. Anyhow, Leonine shot still triggers your pet's frenzy the same way barbed shot does. If it should also trigger beast cleave, let me know and I'll add that in iteration number two. Of course, I had to make sure that enough abilities are actually in Beast Mastery's rotation that got changed, and Cobra Shot looked right for the picking. So I added Viper Shot, which has the trade-off of more cooldown reduction for more focus cost. I was starting to run out of ideas, as is usual around the point where I've cooked up four to six upgrades, so I wanted to go after some ability that was off the beaten path. One of the complaints that I had read on the forums was that pets die a little too easily, so maybe adding some proactive mitigation for them is just the thing. Feedback would definitely be appreciated. I found Beast Mastery a little bit baffling due to its lack of any focus-generating abilities unless you count Chimera Shot. I suppose Beast Mastery doesn't need them, considering its massive passive focus regeneration. To be honest, I'm taking shots in the dark about which trade-offs are potentially worth it and which ones aren't. Although I should probably say that I have one more idea in my back pocket in case one or more of these upgrades needs to be scrapped, and that's upgrading Aspect of the Turtle to Deterrence, both of which were or are defensive cooldowns, though they worked a bit differently. For that matter, I did not look much at cooldowns at first. You know, stuff like True Shot, Aspect of the Wild, or Bestial Wrath. If I should, please let me know, and let me know what trade-offs should be while I'm upgrading those so that they're interesting and or situationally worthwhile. Now, when I started out with these upgrade concepts, I went ability by ability, not purpose by purpose, if you see what I mean. I asked myself, which abilities exist in this specs kit that I can give an upgrade to? And when I created upgrades based on which abilities I could upgrade, I often aimed for something that I thought looked or sounded cool. Almost always I wanted the upgraded ability to feel at least a little bit different from the original. Often I tried to create some kind of trade-off, making the upgrade situationally useful based on things like the number of targets affected or having a stronger effect with a longer cooldown, things like that. Rarely did I upgrade the same ability more than once for the same spec, but while I was putting together each spread of upgrades, what I didn't do, and what I probably should have done in retrospect, was to figure out what goals a player would have while they're looking at a list of upgrades and then make sure upgrades exist in the spread that allow the player to pick upgrades that help them achieve those goals. In my next iteration, I plan to have that design goal in mind, to consider what the player wants to accomplish and how they could accomplish it with the upgrades. I strongly suspect that in this next iteration, there will be a lot more cases where I upgrade the same ability in two or more different ways. That will give players more options, and since that's going to be the goal with goal-oriented design, who knows? I might even have three different upgrades for the same ability in the end. However, I can do this much more effectively in an environment that has a great deal of feedback available, and that's where you come in. You have knowledge that comes from experience with these specs. I don't. I tried to do my research on Wowhead and Icy Veins for each spec, but inevitably there will be things you know that I don't because you have experience that I don't have. You'll have more and better ideas than I could hope to have, and I know I need those, so please. Let me know what you think of these upgrades and what better ideas you have for what to put in their places. If I review the spread of upgrades for Beast Mastery through the lens of how do I use these upgrades for a specific purpose, then actually I think I did okay for multi-target damage. Leonine Shot, Blink Strike, and Frost Trap look pretty decent. Maybe better than that when you realize Blink Strike has no cooldown. But for single target? Well, Viper Shot's okay. Executor Shot is too, but that's only two abilities. Is that enough? Or should I swap some abilities out? Feedback would be very much appreciated here. 
Of course, I know Blizzard probably won't take many, or even any, of these suggestions. Heck, they might even have something objectively better in store for us than the semi-borrowed power upgrade system that I've cooked up here. But knowing what gets players excited will be helpful to them even so. That is why I'm sacrificing so much of my free time and energy on Project Decade. And who knows? They might just need these ideas to get WoW going in the right direction. Heck, if this video series just gets the Blizzard developers into the habit of creating a blue post with the thinking in it that goes in-depth enough for us to understand what they're doing and what their design goals are, then that would be a huge step forward. Even saying the thinking out loud is sometimes enough to get you a new perspective on what you're doing. Is it really what people want? Does it serve the purposes that it really should be serving in the end? Am I really doing something just to make a system look awesome instead of making the game overall better? What does it do for the fun factor? Am I making the mistake of prioritizing my design goals over the fun factor? Are my design goals the right design goals to have? Do my ideas match the specs feel and flavor? Is it a net gain? Is it genuinely awesome? Things like that. Plus, we just plain need more communication from Blizzard. If Project Decade gets the development team into the habit of telling us the thinking for every change they make, then the whole project will have been worth it, even if they don't take a single suggestion. Again, if you see something you don't like, like bad trade-offs or something you know is counterproductive or useless, or if you've thought of an idea that's better or cooler or more useful than mine, then don't hesitate to let me know. The more details you can provide about why you don't like it and what makes one of my ideas counterproductive or useless, or about why your idea is cooler or more useful than mine, the better. One of the main goals of Project Decade is to give whoever's in charge of class design and player power systems a good idea what appeals to players and what will actually get them excited to get back to WoW again. And the more you can say about the wherefore and the why, the better. I fully intend to iterate on this project and make changes in response to feedback. I know I'm going to make mistakes. Heck, I've already seen mistakes in some of the things that I've done. But if those mistakes generate the kind of discussion that Blizzard needs to hear, so much the better. Blizzard needs to see player engagement, humility, and feedback actually making change in action so they can start doing what needs to be done to turn WoW around. It can be done and it should be done. World of Warcraft can last another decade. So keep the feedback coming, folks. There's one last thing. I began working on Project Decade videos back in July, and considering how many months it has taken, the fact that there are 36 different sets of feedback to curate and compile, and multitudes of decisions to make based on feedback received, ideas others have come up with, and how to weave everything together into a fun, functional, and exciting whole, I don't have a chance in the Tremaculum of getting this done in any reasonable length of time unless I get volunteers to help me curate and compile the feedback I'm getting. If you're willing to help curate feedback, please let me know. If I get enough interest, I will set up a Discord server where we can coordinate everything. Thank you in advance for your feedback and support. Let's make World of Warcraft the best game that it can be.